Hello, and welcome to this week's Force.comcast episode, where we're going to talk about selectivity of queries. So one of the things that we need to ensure when we're working with SQL queries is that they are selective. And that means that we have a filter on the query that uh, can be used preferably um, has an index on it and is an index field as part of that filter. So that can be used to retrieve the smallest amount of rows possible for us um, and doesn't require us to do a full table scan. So if we have a look at an example here, um, let's just say we've got the following query where we're selecting the ID and the name from the account object where the name is not equal to a particular value, so Acme Inc. So name is an index field, so we are using an index field in our filter. However, the problem we have here is that we're using not equals. So the not equals filter is actually a non-selective filter. So for us to find all of the records within that table that are not equal to a certain value, we have to scan the entire table and return all of those rows. That's a non-selective query. On the other hand, if we were to do the query where we select the ID and the name, where we're using the ID within a particular set of IDs, that is a selective query. This is because, again, it's an index field that we're working with. The ID is also a sta uh, an index field. It's a standard index field. However, because we're finding it within a certain range, it means we can go through and select a certain number of records. So Salesforce uh, in the force.com query optimizer goes through and as part of its uh, optimization process will run a series of different um, calculations to work out which one of your filters is the most selective and use that as the basis of your query. If you have no selective filters, so none of the filters are working using a custom index or a standard index, um, and none of them are going to meet the selectivity, um, it won't run. And there's a series of thresholds that they put in place around this. So when you're working with a standard index filter, the threshold that you're uh, given is that the filter must retrieve 30% or the, the selected amount of records must be less than 30% of the first 1 million records. So 300,000 and up to and less than 15% of the remaining with a total of 1 million records overall. Similarly, if you're working with a custom index, it's allowed to take 10% of the first 1 million records and 5% of the, re of the remaining records within the system uh, with a max of 333,333 records. Um, and the reason that we have these two limits and the reason the custom index limit is slightly uh, lower is obviously um, Salesforce requires to do some more work on that side, um, but it's so that we can ensure that when we're doing queries, that they are performing and returning results in an optimal manner, so that it's not slowing down the query uh, system for everyone else. If you're using um, uh, um, an AND clause within the two uh, filters that you're working with, the intersection you use must also meet the threshold, and if you're using an OR clause, and the sum of the filters must meet the threshold. So if you have two filters and you're working with an OR clause, the two filters together, the amount of records they retrieve must add up to be less than uh, one of those thresholds. So it's normally the custom index threshold, but if you're using two standard indexes, it'll be the standard index threshold. If you go away and search for the SQL query and search optimization cheat sheet on Google, um, there's a wonderful PDF that Salesforce have put together which goes through step-by-step -step all of these different selectivity thresholds. So when working with a query, you want to make sure that you're using an index field so that it selects the smallest amount of records possible with the most restrictive filter, so that then the other filters can be applied on that uh, set of records to then run in the most optimal manner. So let's go through some example calculations and see how this works. So if we have an org with five and a half million accounts, and we've also got a custom field called shipping number, which we've marked as an external ID. If we run uh, our original query, which is select ID and name from the account where the ID is in a particular set of IDs, we can work out that it's going to be selective. So we retrieve 30% of the first 1 million records, so that's 300,000. And then for the remaining 4.5 million records in that table, we are allowed to retrieve 15% of them, which is, nine, uh, which is another uh, 675,000. And that gives us a grand total of 975,000 records. So that filter we've added there is selective, so we can run that because it's less than a million. Similarly, if we use the custom index of shipping number and we just put in some shipping number we're working with, we're allowed to retrieve 10% of the first million, which is 100,000, and then 5% of the remaining, which is the other 22,500, 
if we put them together and if we retrieve less than uh, and so we're retrieving less than the 333,333 in the 122,500, that is also a selective filter. Now the reason this is important is that if you up the data volumes, you need to be aware of how much you're retrieving. So if we have 55 million accounts in the system, if we select the ID and the name from the account where an ID is in a particular ID set, you can see that this gives us a grand total of 8.4 million records possibly. So the maximum that we're allowed to retrieve, so when the system goes away and runs that for us, the maximum it's still allowed to retrieve is only 1 million. So that's the threshold that's um, put in place for us, even though we have a larger volume of records. So this is something that you really need to be aware of when you're designing uh, your system and architecting it. Be aware of how data volumes are going to scale, because with an, uh, an object like the account, for example, or opportunity and contact, um, many, many well, more most or uh, most companies are going to be putting lots and lots of records within those objects, and so you're going to end up with a large volume of data coming through. So if you don't write your queries in the most selective manner, your performance of your system as the life cycle of the system goes on and on will slow down. This is something you really need to be aware of. In next week's video, we're going to talk about complexity and show you how you can see whether your query is going to be selective or not using the Query Plan tool.